I'm going to use the new Sports Package 2. There is a Sports Package 1, one of our biggest selling products of all time. Sports Package 2 is catching up. Uh, I love it. Let's use a photo portrait with a mask. So we're going to use this one where we're just going to add our photo the exact same way, and then we'll build out a poster in a different way. But here's a sports poster. Ready? It's going to be very easy. You click on your photo mask. You click add photo to template. <clears throat> I'm going to go to some sports images. Let's go to my sports models. Let's find this one. Double click. It goes right into the template. It should go right into the template. Oh, it's a, this one came. Okay, so if you have raw images, you can open them up in camera raw first. And then if you say, okay, it'll then go into the template. That's a nice little touch. So even if you have raw images, you can put them into templates and not lose any quality. You can still adjust them. Uh, and that's all ready for you. So I'm going to make that a little bigger. And there you go. So there's my guy, sports poster. You know, he's not the Arizona Lightning. Now we go to our type. And by the way, all of these fonts are included. So this font is arrow. So then you go to your, you won't do it in bridge, but I want to show you. You go to the fonts that are included. And here are all the fonts. There's your arrow font and you just double click it and install. You'd probably open it with like a Windows font viewer. Uh, you can't do it from bridge, but you can do it from your Windows Explorer or Mac Finder. And you have all the fonts that we include with our temp. So if we have a, a special font that we show in a demonstration or in the package, you get that for free. It's a commercial free font that you can use. Okay, so I'm gonna change, his name isn't Victor. What's his name? Last person to type in uh, was uh, Mark. So his name is Mark. And we'll just keep it Simmons, right? But there's Mark. And then Mark is number, what number is Mark? Let's say Mark is number 20, 28, okay? And so you change it. He's the player of the year, right? I don't like this little bar popping up once in a while. That's a new thing in Photoshop. You can turn it off, but okay. I'll show you why it's interesting in a minute. Uh, up here at the, he's not the Arizona Lightning. He's the Texas, what? He's the Texas Bulldogs. I don't know. We're just making this up. And I can move that over a little bit. You do have print guides, controller command semicolons. So you can see exactly where you are. You want to make sure you don't go outside of those because you may end up printing a little too close to any text or anything important. So do make sure you kind of keep things where you want it. Note that some of this might get cut off. Okay, so there are your print guides, controller command semicolon. Now, what else can I do with this? First of all, I'm going to change the colors, but I can move things around. I think this is a little tight for our subject. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here. I see these design elements, these triangles, I'm gonna move these and let's see the shading, yeah. And the shading layer, I'm gonna move all these down a bit, okay? So I think it just opens up the image a little bit more. And I don't like that I can now see the edge of the photo, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go to my photo mask where the photo is in and press Control or Command T and just make that bigger. I mean, it doesn't matter, as long as it goes behind those uh, arrows, that's good. And I'm gonna change the color. These are shape layers when they have a little icon here. So I'm gonna double click the shape layer and I'm gonna click on his shirt to get a purple, you know, that I like. Maybe just like that, right? And I'm gonna do it with, I don't know, this one, maybe, sure, same thing. Oh, this is a gradient. So, you know, I can change the color of the gradient. A little more complicated, we can click the color of the gradient. I don't know if it's necessary here, but I will show you that it's possible. And we'll make that a little brighter purple. I probably would just choose a hue and saturation on this to save myself all this clicking, but that's okay. And I've done that. So there I've changed that. And um, actually, let, let's undo that because I'm not going to change the top. I think it looks pretty nice with the purple, but just showing you it's possible. And then let's change this one up here because this one should be purple as well. Why did that happen? Double click the, I clicked the wrong layer. And let's change the type. There's a square. Oh, the background is blue. So let's, I think it's just the top here. Let's click the purple as well. So there you go. So I've got a lot of nice colors going on here. And then what else do I want to do with this one? We've got the color. I could change the color of the type, et cetera, the, the drop shadows. Um, you can still adjust your image. So I'm going to make him a little more, I'm going to use a curve adjustment and just bring up the contrast of this image a little bit more, right? So I think he needs to be a little more popping. Now, here's the other thing, which is I'm looking at this, and I think he's great. That's a great sports poster. I think this kid would like it. But, uh, yeah, as Dean said, you know, maybe cut him out of the background. I'm not sure I'm going to do that now. But I do notice something about this poster I really don't like, which is I don't know who this is in the background, but we got to get rid of this guy, right? So let me show you a little trick here with the new remove tool. 
in Photoshop, which the latest version of Photoshop has this new remove tool, which is artificial intelligence to remove things. You could also use spot healing or content aware fill, but let's use the new remove tool. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a selection of my subject first, because first of all, I'm gonna make a copy of the image because I can't work on a, um, I can't work on a smart object. I have to work on the, um, you know, I could do it in the smart object, but let's just do it right here. So I'm gonna make a copy of that. And I could take the remove tool and, and I could paint over this guy. But if, I, if I'm not careful and I go over his arm and the whole thing, let's see what happens. Let's see how this does. I'm going to show you how to be more careful here in a second. But if you're not careful in this situation, because he's just not, actually, it did a pretty good job. But see how it kind of messed up his arm? Here's before, here's after. I don't like what it did with the arm per se. So in this case, I'm not going to do it that way. But I do want to show you that if you had something that wasn't touching, like this kid over here, let's try to remove him. Let's just try to remove him. And I think this will probably do a pretty good job. So let's paint over all of him. Okay, let's see if Photoshop can remove that kid. I think it'll leave a blurry background, but the background's already out of focus, so that's gonna be fine. Okay, fine with me. Let's try this over here, whatever that is. Let's do it one more time. This is where Content Aware Phil might have done a better job. So you've got a couple of options, spot healing, like it might have done something better here. Let's see what it does if I go over it again. But either way, you know, it's gonna be image particular, so I'm fine. That's fine. It looks fine. I don't. It could be a tree back there. It could be anything. No one's looking over there. So I do kind of want to do that. No one's looking over there. But I got to get rid of this guy in the background with the glasses and the long T-shirt and the shorts and the whole thing. He's ruining my photo. So how are we going to get rid of this guy, right? What are we going to do? Well, I showed you before. If, if I if I tried this, and by the way, you can uncheck this, remove after each stroke. So I could paint over him. I could get in there and try to be a little more careful, and I could do this, and then I could. I'm going to hit that. Let me just show you what would happen if I did. Whoop, I'm already over it. So, you know, that's, that's, let me, let me, oops, let me check that. But it's going to try. I'm going to have to do something different. So I'm going to show you the trick. But I want to show you what not to do for a moment. I don't know if that helps uh, because I think that's the first thing I thought of was, well, let's just see how good this new remove tool is with artificial intelligence to get rid of this guy. And that is not good. So that doesn't work. So what are we going to do? Aha, we're going to go to our photo. We're going to press select subject and you can do it down here. You could go to select and then select subject. If you don't have your contextual new toolbar, you could do this with uh, content aware fill. You could do this with spot healing, but we're going to do this. Okay. I selected the subject. I don't care if it's perfect, but I do kind of care around the edges where this guy is in the background with the cool glasses. All right. That looks pretty good. I might adjust my selection just right here and get rid of some of that, okay? Right about there. I'm using the lasso tool. I'm, I'm subtracting from subject. I have add to selection up here. I hold down alter option. It goes to subtract from selection just for a moment. Okay, now that I've made that selection, I wanna use the remove tool to remove this guy. And I wanna tell Photoshop, don't do the remove tool where I have made that selection. Well. Wherever I have the selection is where the remove tool is going to work. Oh, look, actually, do they give it to you? Oh, no, that's just for the selection. So I'm going to go to my remove tool. If I start to paint on it, it's only going to work inside a selection. So if I paint now, look what happens. It's only working inside the selection. Okay, well, I don't want that, so I'm going to escape out of it. I press escape on my keyboard. So I have to invert my selection, so I'm only selecting everything but the subject. So I'm still on this layer. Go to Select Inverse or shift control I or shift command I. Now watch this. Now everything else is selected. So if I use my spot removal tool, you know, or my, yeah, what do they call it? The remove tool, okay? And I now I don't have to be so careful because look, now I'm not going over my subject. I'm going over this dude in the back, but look, I don't, I don't even have to, I'm just painting right over this guy, right? I don't have to be careful at all. I'm just on this one layer. Now watch this. Now I haven't touched my subject, and now Photoshop says, okay, well, we're going to remove this guy in the background for you and put some other pixels there. And look at that, he's gone. And if I press Control or Command D to deselect, I must not have had a great selection here. I could always bring that back, but that's really good. I wonder why that, it just hit a little bit. Do you want me to fix that? That's a bizarre, I wonder why it did that. It, it, it was there. So I'm going to put the selection back on. 
Oh, you know what's interesting is that it, it kind of made its own. You see what it did? Actually, let me try this again. Can I just remove this now? I don't want that. Let me see if I can just remove what it added. It kind of expanded my image. Yeah, I can just go back over it and remove it. It's like, hey, Photoshop, what are you doing? You're getting too creative. <laughs> it was trying to blend the image, but I'm just going through it. Um, that's kind of a weird selection. I would have to fix that later. No, that actually did a pretty good job. Uh, and then right here, let's just go over that again. So I'm just telling Photoshop to remove what it just added, but I kept my selection on, right? I actually kind of like what it did with the shirt up here, so I'm going to leave that. But yeah, that looks great. I don't like this. It made my kid look like he's got a big pants on or something. Isn't this a great tool? Right? So we just fixed all this right up. This is kind of the future of image editing. Isn't that great? I mean, I could go over this and just see what it does, but I think it did a good job. Let's just see. This is my first time demonstrating this tool. It just came out yesterday, actually, in the full version of Photoshop. Uh, I don't like that, so I'm going to undo it. Okay. Control Command D. Look at that, right? So now this guy's gone. That's exactly what I wanted. And that is neat. And then I would maybe do other things. You could colorize. Oop, I don't want to add a photo. You could colorize this guy. You could make him purple. You could change it to orange, right? You could do something like this. There's a million ways to play with this, right? Yeah, the house is distracting. We could do the whole thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is let's just do another one where I do just cut out the entire subject. So this time I'm going to make one Sports Package 2, let's go to our team banners. I'm not going to do it for a team, but I'm going to do all those kind of editing cool tricks I showed you before. Okay, so now I am here. I'm going to turn this sample layer up. Let me make a copy of this, by the way. I don't like to work on my original. You can always download a copy of the image, but I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to turn this off, and I've got a copy up. So Photo Bass Control, you can duplicate images, okay? Hello, Baxter in Brainerd, Minnesota, just said hello. Let's delete this. Let's get rid of this one. Yeah, let's get rid of one of these. I don't need the year here, so we'll do that. Um, let me back up for a second. No, I did. Okay. And then let's make my canvas a little smaller. I don't care if it's 16 by 9, but let's say I want to put this on like a social media post. Do we make it square? Let's make it square for social media. So I'm going to do this. So I, well, actually, I want to make a poster. So let's make it... Uh, poster size what would a poster be like a 16 by let's just do ratio 16 by 24 okay like that maybe so let's do that so i'm going to crop to 16 by 24 i did not delete crop pixels so all my pixels are still there but i have to bring things in i mean if you what did i just click if you want your type here we just have to drag it in right and then if this is varsity volleyball you know, you may have to change this text a little bit, although this might be very big on the screen. Let's just do, let's just bring this to a new layer or a new, um, you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm just, I'm editing the type just like this. So I'm just making this now, I can't, I can't see with my eyes. Okay, just like that. And then you can go into your character panel and you can adjust, let's see if I can make that bigger. There we go, like that. So there's a few little bells and whistles there. So I'm going to move this over. I don't like that. Okay, so now that I've, I've redone my type, um, and I'll make that a little smaller, right? Because I'm, I'm getting this all in proportion. Eh, maybe do it like down here, right? Now I can take all three of these layers. I'm going to center them on the screen. Okay, they were already centered apparently. But let's try it again. There we go. I'm going to bring them down. But what am I going to do? I'm going to make them bigger, right? I'm going to make this bigger. Controller Command T to make this bigger because I, I want to fill that area. But I, I had to create something new with this type. So there you go, right? I had to create. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even type anything. I just used the layers that were already there, and I'm resizing them. You can move this contextual toolbar. You can click here and say pin it, and you can put it up at the top if you want. Okay. So see how I just kind of moved all this over. So what did I do, by the way? I took a template, Team Banner 5, this one here, which could have been a Team Banner. Fine, there's an example, and that's great. But I'm doing this with it instead. Now, what about that top there? I'm going to make that her name. So I'm going to bring in somebody, an athlete. Okay, and I'm going to make that their name. So let's do my, who should I put in here? Uh, Diane just said she was loving this, so we're going to use Diane's name. D-I-A-N-N-E. Thank you, Diane. Controller Command T on text, the easiest way to resize it, just like that. Look at that. Wow. 
Okay, now this is a little big and I need to make my capital L here, I think. Okay, and I think it looks a little big, but we can always play with that later. And maybe I just, I do want that on one line, but that's fine. We'll leave it for now and see what happens. Okay, so now I've redone this. By the way, the background I didn't delete, so I can move the background. I'm using the move tool and I'm moving the background. So we'll see what looks good once I bring in a player. And all of this can be adjusted. I probably shouldn't have adjusted this. So oh, I didn't adjust it. Let's bring this down a little bit. So I'm using my character panel and my line spacing. Okay, just like that. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good, but I gotta bring in an athlete. So what am I gonna do? Let's go back to where, I forget what layer the athlete was on, above the name, I guess it was. So let's do that right above my name right here, or the name in the image. So let's, um, we can add a photo to the template the same way we did before. Uh, actually, let's not, it'll, it's, it's gonna end up clipping it to the type, so we don't wanna do that. But let's, let's just drag it in. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go to my sports images, and let's take um, like this guy, that would be, oh, let's do volleyball, because we have the volleyball type, okay, whoops. So now I'm just gonna drag it in just like that. There she is, there's Diane. All right, Diane, there you are. And Diane should be a little bit bigger, right? And Diane should be cut out. So we're going to select subject. And we're gonna hope Photoshop selects my subject. And all we're gonna do now is press the mask icon, which is here or down here. And Photoshop will remove everything it didn't select. And there is Diane, just perfectly cut out in my poster. And maybe, you know, Diane's number seven. So we didn't, we didn't, uh, did I, by the way, I can center, I wanna make sure Diane is centered on the screen. Yep, there, see I had to center that up a little bit. And we can make Diane a little bit bigger if we want. Maybe if you wanna make sure she's really filled in there. Beautiful. Um, we can do a lot of things. I mean, first of all, you could add her number, take your, uh, Type here, hold down Alt or Option, click and drag, and let's just put number seven in the background. And I know it says it on her shirt, but you may not have an athlete with it on the shirt, so you may want to do something like that, right? You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. That's kind of neat, right? So Dan's there with number seven. Let me bring her down just a bit. Now, I want to show you a great tip. I did not do a perfect extraction. And if I go inside here, I'm going to just look at this. On my mask, I'm going to create a selection here really quickly of this because I, I don't want that white there. And I'm just gonna put black on that in the background and press delete, so that goes away. Okay, so that's a that's an okay selection. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add an outer glow to Diane. So uh, she kind of stands off that background a little more. So let's double click her layer, add an outer glow. It's really fun for sports. I'm gonna bring this up 100%, maybe like that, but let's, not like that, I think, yeah, like that, something like that, right? So it's just a little bit of a little glow there. So she just stands out really nice. I really like that. And you could change the color of that, et cetera, but there you go. And the other thing is, isn't that neat? And by the way, you could print this as a 16 by 24. You have plenty of pixels, 300 PPI. You could print this as a wallet size. You could save this now, go to file, Sorry, yeah, file, export as, export it as a JPEG. Look, go to export as, and you could share this online. You could share this for a phone. You could share this in messages and email and text and anything. You have multiple variations, right? Social media posts. Change the size right here and export it. And that won't hurt the original document, which is your PSD file. Save that and come back to it. Now, what else do I want to do with this? I mean, Diane looks a little, you know, again, I could adjust Diane with adjustments. You know, I think she needs to have a little more contrast right? Something like that. Maybe you can desaturate her a little bit. You know, it looks a little too sharp, a little too too colorful, right? Will it great on a coffee mug, as Mark said? Now, you could also do a bunch of other things. Let's just do some fun stuff. The background, I can still move the background. Okay, so wow, I like it right there even better, right? Maybe a little too wild, but good. You know, you could just have so much fun with this. Now, I'm gonna create a copy of this whole thing. We're gonna try this. Click Comp and Photobass Control. That makes a copy of your entire image up at the top. Okay, so there it is. Let's smart object it. That makes a smart object, so we can turn this on and off very easily. Let's go to Filter. Let's add some filters to it. How about a camera raw filter to this? Okay, for our varsity basketball day on number seven, let's uh, press Auto and see what happens. Wow, let's add some, you know, let's see what happens if I adjust the black levels. 
Let's adjust the whites. Look at that. Oh yeah, this just now it's popping. Now we've got Diane exactly where we want this image, right? Look at that. And then we could add some clarity to this for sports. It's neat. Look at that. Oh my goodness. You could come down here and add some texture to it. Some, uh, well, you could take away noise, grain, let's see some effects. Let's add some grain to this, maybe. I don't know. Let's not do that. Some vignetting. I don't know. Maybe. No. I'm just playing. I don't like that. I'm going to double click. Let's go back to zero here. I don't think we need grain, but there you go. What about texture? I just felt like it needed something. Let's see if the texture does anything. No, I think it looks great. Just like that, maybe a little texture. Dehaze it. Haze. Oh, I love it. All right. Say okay. Look at that. Boom. I mean, tell me who wouldn't like this. Tell me the athlete. Tell me the family member. Tell me the kid. Tell me the senior in high school. Tell me somebody who wouldn't like this. And I've seen a lot of sports images out there. And when they don't use photo backs and they don't use our sports packages, I just want to throw up. Because when I look at our image and I'm like, this is what we do. You know, our stuff looks amazing. This looks fantastic, right? Yes, you could change the background for that matter, right? You could go into your sports package or any other. Let, let's go into a whole different package. Let's go to our, uh, let's go to the premium package too. And let's look at some backgrounds. I don't think there's many, there are backgrounds, but there's uh, special effects. Oh, we could add a special effect. That's kind of fun. I'm just going to drag it in and show you what you can do, <laughs> right? So you could add a special effect. This is in the premium package too. Just change the blending mode to screen. Look at that. You can add something else to it if you want to, right? Hey, you lower the opacity. There's just a different, you know, a bunch of different ways to do this. Maybe make it bigger. You know, something neat in the background. I don't know. Change the color, right? You have so many different ways to do this. I don't know why I just did that, but it's fun. Try different things. Make it your own, right? Okay, let's get rid of that. That was a good idea, though. But you can change the back. Oh, look, I just made the whole background red. Yeah, we can change the color of the background. Hold on, let's take it out. I didn't even change the color of the background. Watch this. Hue and saturation on the background. Look at this. I like that. It's neat. It's just something totally different, right? I mean, it doesn't really work here, but why not? You can find some red in there and then change the top one as well. I turned off that layer, but change this as well. So, you know, just have fun with this. I don't know what Diane's going to like better. Let's do another comp, right? Let's do a smart object. Let's do the exact same filter, camera raw filter. I'm going to repeat it. You go to the top, it'll repeat the same one. Their very first filter is a repeat. And it didn't repeat. Okay, so I'm on smart object. No problem. Go to auto. Adjust those levels again the way I liked. Right? I don't know. Some texture, some clarity. Boom. Just done. I'm just making this up. So now you have two options for Diane. Took you me three seconds. Here's option number one. Let me turn both on. Here's option number one. Does Diane like this? I don't know. Or does Diane like that? I don't know and I don't care. I only care what Diane likes. I don't care what I like. I don't care what you guys like. I care what Diane likes. That's the best part of this, right? You asked that. Dean said, you asked Diane. That's the answer. Diane says, I like this one. You say, good, I'm glad I spent three minutes because now I can sell you on it. And now I can say, Dan, would you like this in a trading card size? I can print anywhere at any size. I can resize this to any size I want, right? And adjust this any way I want. You just have to move the layers around. 